Hello everyone and welcome back to another Babbling Irons video with myself and Sloth today. This is an interesting one because we utilised a lot of different players in a lot of different positions last season, Sloth. We obviously saw the likes of Paqueta playing out on the left-hand side. We saw someone like Ward Prowse play as a, a deeper, kind of next to the six as an eight. We saw him play as a ten. We saw Bowen play striker right wing. We saw Kudus play on the left, on the right, in the middle. So this is about Kudus and how we're going to effectively get the best out of him next season. Because we've seen from last year that he is a standout talent in the squad. It was a fantastic signing. And even though he has been played out of position on multiple occasions, he's still been that bright spark across the front four to make something happen in transition. So first of all, are you happy with Kudus's output from the first season at West Ham? I think he was incredible. I think bar Bowen, he was he was the best player on the pitch. And, you know, you, you only have to look at the stat of him dribbling, where it was, what, near enough 50 more dribbles than the closest person next to him, which was Jeremy Doku at Man City. Yeah. And I think that speaks for itself, you know. The, the problem we had was that, I think European football this season, no European football this season caused a lot of panic amongst the fan base because we saw the level of players that we have at the club. And particularly with Kudus, I think we were just kind of expecting him to go if we didn't get European football. And next, well, this coming season, I think that is very much, it has to be the ambition. It has to be the aim, bare minimum, to get that sort of level um, so that we can keep a player like him because I think he was fantastic and he could easily be someone who is in and around a top four squad. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, we're looking at his stats from last season and this is how he compared to other wingers in the top five uh, European leagues. Obviously, he played predominantly as a winger for West Ham. So what you were mentioning there, you know, how effective he was in transition um, was was fantastic. You know, dribbles per 90s and he's averaging almost 10 dribbles per game. <laughs> The reason his successful dribble percentage is probably lower than the average is because of the sheer volume of dribbles he's trying to attempt. And, you know, the way we played definitely depended on him being successful as an outlet. And, you know, the successful actions per 90, very high up, offensive duels per 90, uh, you know, goals, non-penalty goals. Uh, he scored eight goals last season. So all just fantastic uh, attacking asset really to have. And, you know, he's someone that's, I think got a little bit of everything, hasn't he? He's got the work rate defensively. He's got the ability on the ball to play in tight spaces between the lines. And he's also got ability when he does drift wide to put in some really good crosses and his delivery has been fantastic. And obviously he's got the goal scoring threat as well, as we've seen with his variety of goals. And I'm just very, very excited about how Lopetegui is going to use him. How do you think it's going to be best to use him? And we can kind of give a visual representation of it because we spoke about in our last video yesterday, if you want to check that out, what the best midfield free trio should be. Kudus was in that as kind of the advanced eight slash 10. So if we just shift over to here, talk me through this setup, Sloth, and how Kudus can be effective in this sort of system. And yeah, we've left left wing and striker blank because we're still waiting on those transfers to come through. Yeah, I think obviously for the moment as well, you can you can like guess and, and say that we, we might throw Gil Herme in at left wing at some point. But I think personally, we'll look to start Kudus down the middle. And the game that really stands out for me as to why I think that would work the most is, is when we got absolutely thumped at Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge. And he was pretty much the only player who I thought could come away from that performance and hold his head up high. He was constantly working. He was causing Chelsea problems. But if you harness that sort of work rate and energy that he showed, if you can play that down the middle, and we know that Kudus, as you mentioned, has that passing ability, he's got the link-up play, but he can be a bit of a goal threat. And I don't think it's unfair to say that he missed some very glaring chances last yeah. season. And I just think if you give him, if you put him in the middle, the way he plays, he's far more likely to, to thrive in that area because he will be seeking out the ball more and I think he will have the best chances to finish there if that yeah. makes sense I think I think the best chances will fall to him and though he lacks a bit of the clinical edge of Bowen I think that you would get that from him in the middle just mm. if not from confidence alone from when he scores a few but the other thing I, I like is that the sheer engine 
he has and the speed at which he does things. If you put him in that middle with an already quite tenacious midfield of Alvarez and Paqueta, I think you've got that dynamo next to them who can link up with them. They're all good on the ball, but Kudus can play those quick one twos. He yeah. can he can then burst forward, find a a, a few yards of, of space, and look to do that again. Look to link up with Bowen going forward. Yeah. So for me, I think that that central position for him could be where we see the best from him because yeah. of his overall link up play. This video is sponsored by Emotive. Emotive provide cutting edge digital services, solutions and training to companies and businesses of all sizes. Emotive have worked with some fantastic brands in the past, as you can see behind me, the likes of Apple, Google, Tesco, and of course, Babbling Irons. Emotive offer four key services, the first being digital solutions, the second being professional training and coaching, the third being fractional experts, and the fourth being AI readiness. We're going to be working with Emotive on our channel to improve how we showcase the data to you guys in our breakdown videos and data analysis videos. If you want to find out more information about how Emotive can work with you, make sure to scan the QR code now, which will take you to emotivetouch.com, where you can find out more details about the company and the link will be in the description. A massive thank you to Emotive once again for sponsoring this video. And let's get back to it. I think for me as well, what we saw a lot last season was, say we had possession of the ball and we're a little bit higher up like this. Now we've got, say, we might be signing another right centre-back, but it's likely to be someone like Mavropanos. We know Kilman is very good on the ball. We know Alvarez likes to drop in and be almost the anchor that's collecting the ball in these areas. And what we're going to get from having Paqueta and Kudas in here is, A, Paqueta is someone that naturally likes to drop deep and get on the ball and look for, like we saw at Newcastle away, picking up this type of area, playing a fantastic ball through to Antonio over the top of the defence, and we actually scored from it. What we don't have currently is someone in between the lines when we are playing with the ball. So what we've seen so many times, whether that's Suchek or War Prowse being in this position, just as an example, imagine that's them. War Prowse did it on multiple occasions. He'll come and drop similar to like Paqueta and he'll look for passes either to Kufau, to Emerson, back to Alvarez, maybe an easier a pass to Bowen. But someone like War Prowse isn't going to try those intricate passes like Paqueta. Now, what we what forced us a, a lot of the time was wide. We were so, whenever we played, it was very obvious that we wanted to try and overload wide areas where possible and get crosses into the box to the striker. And, and at times it did work when teams allowed us to kind of get through that press a little bit easier. But it was very, very rare that we saw someone picking up spaces in the half pockets unless someone like Kudus drifted in from left wing or right wing. So what you're effectively doing is giving Kudus a lot more time and leniency to do that um, on multiple occasions. And you're giving the defense something to worry about because all of a sudden when Alvarez picks up the ball, you've got Paqueta who's likely going to be dropping inside him looking for either the left wing, the striker, the right wing, but he's also going to have Kudus as this outlet who we know is fantastic in tight spaces on the half turn and is explosive pace. It's, it's going to be a killer, not just in transitions, but even when we're trying to suffocate teams a little bit more of possession, um, and, and, you know, when we're trying to build up with Lopetegui now, we need this outlet. We need someone that's going to connect this part of the midfield to the front three because last season we didn't have that at all. Um, and again, when we're playing Paqueta 10, it's slightly negated because he's not someone that's going to sharply get on the half turn and beat someone with a burst of pace. That's not his type of game. But that that is Kudus's game. So I think from an offensive point of view, it's going to be a massive, massive upgrade on what we've currently got. And I think this is the best way to utilize someone like Kudus because he's going to be effective at right wing or left wing because he's naturally very skillful. He's naturally very fast and he's naturally very good at dribbling. So he's got all the kind of key fundamentals to be a really good winger. But this is where you're going to get the most out of him because he's going to be able to play between the line of the, the midfield and defense of the opposition. And he's also going to be able to find these kind of pockets of space. And then again, the likes of Bowen, our new left winger, if that's Gil Herme or someone else, will have so much more time on the ball because their midfield anchors will be more worried about what Kudus is doing in the middle. So what about defensively stuff? Because we spoke about, obviously, offensively, he's going to be a massive threat in transition, picking up the ball in tight spaces. But what about defensively? Because we know his work rate is fantastic as well. So when we're trying to press or regain possession of the ball, how can he be effective, more effective in those central areas? Well, I think it's it's what impressed a lot of West Ham fans, as you mentioned, not just the work rate, but the 
the physicality, the way he was able to shrug players off the ball, but also do that to win it back and start a counter attack. And he was vital in in us getting a number of goals last season, if not just because of that work rate that he showed. Um, the other aspect that I think is really important to stress is how he can he can look to drive forward, yeah. and quite often we saw you know. A, Bowen does this time after time, and um, he he did it in Eng- for the for the England side, um, for Harry Kane's first goal was it? Um, yeah. Or someone's someone's some boring goal, um, <laughs> but um, he delivered a fantastic ball in after he chased back, and Kudus does that. But when you have two players who you know for sure are going to do that, and those two linked up really well. And I think even Kudu said about how he knows now where Bowen is going to run. He knows that he's going to have someone who is near him and looking to pick it up and it's mm. going to create space for him. And I think that while defensively, you can say that when you're looking to counterattack, you're dropping naturally deeper. But Kudu's pressing is such that he can actually defend from the front and he can cause, he can force uh, players into mistakes. He can force the opposition into uh, a pass that we can immediately close down. We can double up on. And as I mentioned, if, if Bone's close to him, like he did, he was at times last season, they can immediately close that player down together. And it's not just defending as a reaction; it's defending from the front. And that's mm-hmm. something that I think we've really lacked. And when when I look at midfielders who really shone in driving us forward and and you know defending as well the last one that i can really think of is scott parker yeah and i know it seems like a weird comparison to make because they're two very different players but i think the sort of engine and work rate that's the only way that you can compare the two and the way they were willing to put themselves about and we know that kudus is willing to make challenges as well so yeah. it's not like it's not like um, this. I th- I'd say somewhat out of date notion of having a luxury player, mm. and um, it's not a case of they're gonna they're gonna be someone that you the rest of the side has to has to carry and and you know use as a creative outlet. They're willing to do the hard graft as well. Yeah, so, no, I completely agree. I think as well, you know, when we're thinking about some how we wanted to press, especially you know, especially last season, I think. By Leverkusen at home, we got the press spot on. It was fantastic in that first half in the second leg. And they didn't know, you know, one of the best teams in Europe at, you know, building out from the back and being so good with the ball. We made we made them have a very tough time at the London Stadium in that first 45 minutes. I think we burnt out and I think Alonso made some good switches at halftime tactically to kind of negate some of that. But what we're going to need to see is more of that. Again, we're seeing it so much more now in the Premier League. Teams building out from the back. So say their goalie has the ball here. We'll see two centre-backs split very close on the edge of the kind of six-yard box. And they'll either look to play through here or back across and around. Or they'll go back across and look for the switch. Or they'll try and play between the lines. If we bring in someone like a Duran or someone that's, you know, explosive, again, similar to Kudus, and you've got that trigger for a press, say this, this ball is played into here. What we've now got is someone who has got the work rate and the instinct slash know-how to press. Um, Because too many times last season, we saw us try and press. uh, We would press like this. We wouldn't really follow in and it would be so easy to play through. And again, this became a massive issue in midfield. We were unlikely to see that happen as much, A, because of Lopetegui's style and B, because of how the effectiveness of Kudas being in that position in the middle where he is able to do the, as you say, the defensive work in offensive situations. And Lopetegui's system is massively, massively enhanced when he has players that can press in this third of the pitch. So again, his philosophy is trying to regain possession of the ball very, very quickly in the offensive third of the pitch. So again, where their defensive third buildup would be. And, you know, at Sevilla, he had like the highest turnover percentage out of any La Liga team. Um, again, didn't always necessarily convert from it because of the, you know, the conversion rate. But the idea and the philosophy of pressing high up, you're going to need someone like Akudas. You're going to need, a, again, we've spoke about needing that pace and hard work on the left. We know we've got it with Bowen. And then we know Piquetta and Alvarez are 
as well. Very, very uh, solid defensively with how they would like to push up as well. And again, you've got, like we mentioned with the core, you've got Kilman and Mavropanos or a new right uh, right centre back at that core. You know, you see teams like Arsenal do it really, really well. You see teams like Man City do it exceptionally well. So I just think having that workhorse in the middle is often undervalued. And I think we too many times last season, we didn't have that. When Ward Prowse was actually playing in this 10, that's where we saw the best of him because he was pressing and he was almost the front line of it. And we were able to kind of step up with him. But there were also times where we were left massively exposed if he was doing that from, say, this position, because then you've got just a massive gap in behind that was really easy to play out of. So I think it's going to be an interesting one to to kind of watch how he's set up more as we kind of progress more in preseason. We've seen him utilized as a right winger in the last preseason game. So, yeah, I think once we get some more players back and we start to get our first team gelling again in preseason, I think Lopetegui is going to want to try that midfield free. What are your thoughts? Do you think it will be, do you think, A, do you think it will happen? And B, do you think it will be a success if that midfield free and Kuda's playing in that position is, is deployed correctly? I think the key thing is that we also add in players who can do that around them you know we need a left winger we need a top quality left winger who can also add that and though i mentioned go earlier i think it's key that we have someone who is a bit more proven to do that or at least have an option to change so and in natural position as well exactly and i think that it's all well and good if it say we went out and got wesley gasova and we put him on that left wing if he's struggling you can take the burden off him and put Guillaume in there for a little bit. You can put Kudus in there and and look to play them centrally. But it's also about the change at West Ham that's needed as a as a overall unit in attack. And I think that particularly um away at Bayer Leverkusen, we saw how much we were affected by a drop off in the squad and, yeah. and a smaller squad number. And this season we need to be looking at Antonio as someone to start. Or, or, or if we're going to look at Antonio as someone to start, then we have to be having at least an option we have lined up in the window at the start of the season and someone to come in and ease that burden. Or look to bring someone on, or Antonio on at the 70-minute mark so that they can also keep that intensity up. Because yeah. we conceded far too many late goals or we conceded far too many first goals and having this press, having this high energy, high pace midfield unit is going to be key in us limiting that or at least trying to cancel that out and hopefully causing a lot of mistakes, a lot of um, counter attacks on our end as well. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I just I just really want to see Kudus in that middle uh, middle third of the pitch and, you know, playing more centrally and. Yeah, just trying to get the best out of him and getting him involved in games as much as we can because I think he's going to take it up a notch this season playing in a new kind of attacking-ish system compared to what we saw last season. So, yeah, let us know in the comments down below. Where do you think Mo Kudus's best position is? Where would you like to see him play for us next season under Julian Lopetegui? We think it's going to be in that kind of advanced uh, 8 or 10 position. Let us know if you think any differently. Um, If you enjoyed the breakdown, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And Slough, until the next one. Come on, you eyes.